My name is Scott Galloway. I teach at NYU, and I appreciate your time this morning. Last year on this stage, I was fortunate enough to have a platform. The video went quote unquote viral, at least for a professor, where I boldly made the prediction that Amazon would decline in value. As soon as I said that, this is what happened to the stock. It's literally, I don't have time for applause. It's literally, it's literally as if a million people watched me and said, it's clear this guy has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. Let's go buy the stock. First observation, we get it wrong all the time. I hope a lot of this is right, but I know some of it's wrong. So the four horsemen, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, have all had an exceptional year. They've gone from the GDP of Spain in terms of their market cap to the GDP of Canada. To give you a sense of the outsized value creation, that's the economic value of Canada spread across the population of the Lower East Side. Google's market cap, as you can see, dwarfs a ton of other companies in the ad-supported media space. Amazon, it's difficult to find retailers other than Walmart that can match the market capitalization of Amazon. In November and December in the US, they controlled 43% of all e-commerce. The next 10 combined accounted for just 24%. It is now Amazon and the seven dwarves in the world of e-commerce. In Europe, it's largely the same. Their growth this year of $4 billion is approximately the same as the next nine largest e-commerce companies in Europe. Facebook continues to be the most successful thing in the history of time. There are 1.1 billion self-identified Catholics. There are 3.4 billion people with a meaningful relationship with Facebook. It's more successful than Buddha, Allah, the Kardashians. Apple, it's difficult to find enough companies to equate to the growth. This is not apples to apples. This is how much revenue Apple added last year. We said, watch out LVMH caring and, and Prada, here comes, L, here comes Apple. This is how much revenue they added. They added these companies' revenue to their top line just in 2015. They added $51 billion. So in sum, it's Jeff, Larry, Tim, and Mark's world. We just shop, search, text, and post in it. We talk at these conferences about the winners, but we typically don't talk about the losers. When companies are going 20 and 30% a year in a 2% growth economy, there's someone on the wrong end of that coin. Let's talk about some of the victims. Let's talk about Facebook and Google together in terms of their attack on the world of media. They are growing at 40 and 12% respectively versus traditional media, which is, which is either flat or in decline. In 2010, we said magazines would be Facebook. Facebook was at 2 billion. Magazines were at 18. Just a short few years later, magazines have exploded down to 11 billion, and Facebook is at 16. The advertising industrial complex is about to come to an end, and the downstream service providers, the conglomerates, are about to take their turn at the woodshed. The house that advertising built was consumer packaged goods. They taught us that detergents and soaps could be wrapped in emotion. You were a better mom. You were more American. You were a more elegant European if you used a certain type of hand soap. This is the house that advertising built. Last year, the house that advertising built, almost 90% of all CPG brands lost share in two thirds lost revenue. Why? Because advertising sucks. And if you're wealthy, you can opt out of advertising. We are now downloading Modern Family and paying two bucks from it from iTunes solely, solely so we can avoid the advertising. Advertising is becoming a tax only poor people pay. L'Oreal, Jean-Paul Argonne, the brands that grew the most in 2014 were low advertising intensive like Urban Decay, like Kiehl's. The head of Estee Lauder, the fastest brands including Mac or Joe Malone or La Mer or Bobby Brown are not advertised in the traditional way. It's becoming a lottery economy, more venture capital going into the ecosystem but fewer exits. It truly is a winner-take-all ecosystem. The mobile ad market, ground zero for innovation, it's a duopoly. Two companies control 50% of the global market for mobile advertising, and every day they eat more share. Let's talk about Amazon and Apple in the context of retail. It is difficult to find enough companies who grew as fast as Amazon and Apple. Combined, they grew about $65 billion. To give you a sense of the scale, Nike had its best year in history last year, almost 
increased its stock by 50%. It grew $2.8 billion. We couldn't find enough brands and retailers to match the growth of Amazon and Apple, so we had to go outside the industry and add Volvo, Mercedes, BMW, and Daimler Chrysler, and Toyota to match just the growth of Apple and Amazon. Last year, Amazon accounted for 51 cents of every increased spend online. They're now responsible for 25% of all of the growth of all of retail in the US. Amazon has redefined the way we think about building businesses, the same way Game of Thrones has redefined modern television. What did Game of Thrones do that was so unique? It took the hero and it started killing them. We had never seen that before. People say Amazon can't be profitable. Amazon can be profitable anytime it wants. It, is, it has consciously decided not to be profitable. Why? Profits are heroin to investors. They love them, they get addicted to them, and when you take them away, they get very irritable. When Walmart decides to make big capex to compete with Amazon, which is the right move, the market responds angrily. Markets do not like nausea and up and down. They like consistent. No company is more consistent than Amazon. It runs purely at break even. What is the product that defines our age? It's the mobile phone. The product that defines our age, 92% of the profits are going to one brand, Apple. Samsung gets about 13 or 14%, and everybody else fights over the losses. PCs are in structural decline, right? Don't tell Apple that. Apple sold more PCs in 15 than they did in 14. Let's talk about Apple's failure. The media thinks everything's going to change the world or is a total failure. You will never see a headline that says, Apple Watch sales, pretty good. You just don't see that. So everyone's decided Apple Watch is a failure. Let's talk about the failure that is the Apple Watch. Samsung owns 74% of the smartwatch market. Apple came in and overnight, Apple took the entire share away from Samsung. Look at the stock price over the last three years of Apple up 67%. Now look at the stock price of every company in the wearables or the smart watch market or the watch market. Ask watch players, Richemont, Swatch, if they think the Apple watch was a failure. The Apple Watch will do between five and $10 billion in sales this year. The entire Swiss watch industry is 25. This is killing the watch industry. In its first year in business, it was the second largest watch company in the world. We've never had a product launch in a mature industry be that big. What about society? If you look at the GDP of countries, it almost equates perfectly to their influence. These companies now have more influence than many countries that are in the news every day. Let's look at each of them. Amazon has a GDP or a market cap greater than the GDP of Iceland, Romania, Slovakia, and Bulgaria. Let's add in Apple. We get Ireland, Estonia, and Finland, Facebook, Belarus, and the Czech Republic. We add in Google. We pick up Denmark, Latvia, and the Ukraine. Essentially, these four firms are as influential as Eastern and Northern Europe. If we throw in Alibaba and pick one economy, these firms, as a combined entity, now have more influence than Russia. What are these firms doing with that influence? I believe they are trying to do to the US economically what the South could not do militarily. And I believe they have decided to secede from the United States. They have better municipal infrastructure. They have opted out of health care and offer their own services. You can freeze your eggs at Facebook. In exchange for this, they have decided that they should no longer be warranted to the US tax code. We not only comply with the laws, but we comply with the spirit of the laws. We comply with the spirit of the laws. <laughs> no, not really. The spirit of U.S. tax laws is not that you can license your intellectual property to Ireland and then charge highly profitable domains a tax such that you deflate the profits in high tax domains, increase the profits in low tax domains, thereby lowering your global tax rate. That is not the spirit of the U.S. tax code. Does that make Tim Cook a bad person? Absolutely not. He seems like a wonderful man. He has a fiduciary duty to pay as little taxes as possible and reward his shareholders. However, I think there is good news. I think after being in abusive relationships for several years with the most profitable companies in the world, we have said if the best companies in the world are not going to pay their taxes, we're down with that as long as they fight ISIS, upgrade our infrastructure, and educate our students. 
the path to a trillion dollars. One of these companies will get to a trillion over the next three years. Facebook monetization, Amazon acquisition, Google extension, Apple articulation, Facebook monetization. Facebook is growing faster than any firm of its size in the history. It's defined gravity. Its growth does not seem to continue to slow even as it approaches a run rate of $20 billion. It's growing its share of digital marketing and its share is beginning to take share from Google of all people. However, it's really only monetized one of its four assets. The other three, Messenger, WhatsApp, and Instagram are just starting to be monetized. Instagram, they're beginning. $1 billion acquisition worth 20 now, best acquisition in the history of tech. WhatsApp, 900 million users in just two years. There is precedence for, for optimizing and monetizing messaging. WeChat gets about five bucks per person. Other huge bets, other innovation will come as Facebook is now spending more per dollar in R&D than any tech company in history. They are the most nimble company, the most product, product generative, innovative company in the world. Three years, 0% mobile. Three years later, 76% of mobile. That is the greatest pivot in modern history. The case for a trillion is right now they have a billion daily active users. They monetize them for 16 bucks, 16 billion in revenue. They have a $300 billion market cap. That's a multiple of 19 times. What if they were to grow to 2 billion daily active users, get to $50 in monetization, which is a lower growth rate in monetization than they've experienced across their platforms over the last three years? They have $100 billion in revenue. I think that is a $1 trillion market cap company at 10x times revenue. Amazon needs to make acquisitions. Amazon's core competence is storytelling that results in the cheapest source of capital in the history of mankind. At some point, tomorrow has to be today, and they're going to decide to cash in their chips and go profitable. They are opening stores. I think they should acquire Macy's and Carrefour. They end up with a combined company of $300 billion, EBITDA of 50, growth of 12%, and 50% of their revenue coming from bricks, 50% coming from online, the true omnium channel retailer of the future. They go from 68 fulfillment centers to 1,000, picking up Macy's who have optimized their stores to become flexible warehouses with friendly people called sales associates, and they pick up another couple thousand warehouses with Carrefour. It's a great time to buy. These companies' stocks are depressed. They could pay a 40% premium for their stocks and acquisition and only occur a 15% dilution. Google extension. Google knows they need a bigger business. There is another, though. There is an industry that is bigger, that is more profitable, is $1.6 trillion in the U.S. versus $200 billion in the ad market, and has increased its price as fast as inflation than any market that size. What am I talking about? I'm talking about college. In two weeks, I kick off my brand in a digital, digital age class at NYU Stern. 325 kids have enrolled. They each pay $6,000 or $1.9 million for me in a room for 12 nights with a projector. That comes out to $163,000 a night. I'm good. I aspire to be great. But what I'm getting paid is insane. To give you an example, this is what these people make every week to perform. Adele makes approximately $150,000 per performance. To highlight the distinction between her talent and my talent, I'm about to do something you will never be able to unsee. Let's talk about Apple. <laughs> Apple's path to a billion dollars is one of articulation. Just as Jeff Bezos is a great storyteller, Tim Cook is a great operator, but he's not a good storyteller. Facebook connecting the world, easy to understand, compelling, I'm going to buy their stock. Amazon, the world's biggest store, compelling, easy to understand, I'm going to buy their stock. Google, organizing the Earth's information, super compelling. What is Apple's mission? They don't have one that they can articulate. As a result, we don't evaluate their progress against their mission. Amazon can fail with the fire. Google can fail with glass. But with Apple, because we don't know if they're making progress against a larger mission, we evaluate them in the context of every product release, and they pay an absence of vision tax. All Apple needs to do to get to a trillion dollars is show us what they're doing, articulate it in a compelling way, and if their multiple on EBITDA goes just to 12, boom, they're at a trillion dollars. This is actually an absence of vision that is keeping them from a trillion dollars. 
The heroes of yesteryear used to put thousands of beautiful middle class and upper middle class homes into the water. The heroes of today are producing a small number of yachts and the middle class is just trying to struggle, trying to not take on water. What is the net net of all this? As my team asked me last night, when kids come to me, a globalization, the frictionless, of, frictionless nature, free flow of capital, the winner-take-all environment of the ecosystem that Amazon has treated, trained all VCs to pursue, means that now it has never been easier to be a billionaire, but it's never been harder to be a millionaire. Equity, we like the idea of giving people ownership through stock. The top 50% of US and American households have gone to 95% of the income gains, mostly through equity. We then have this chaser afterburner effect by taxing equity at a lower rate. There is nothing equitable about equity in a digital age. Meaningful. I don't want to in any way reduce the impact technology is having. We're making wonderful products that will be better for the environment. Young people who are talented, educated, and born in the right places have never had more opportunity. That's an important thing. We need inequality to a certain extent to inspire people. I love this message I got from Uber saying that a person who was hearing impaired was picking me up. Please send the directions. That is a wonderful thing. There are some very meaningful things taking place. As you get older and you have kids, though, you find that the profound is access to health care, education, and housing for a reasonable rate, or safe harbor from, safe, from violence. This is what's profound in terms of technology and innovations march. We're making huge progress against the meaningful, but on the profound, we come up wanting. My name is Scott Galloway. I work at NYU, and I appreciate your time.